Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Henchman Story. We're getting through game night where, uh, unfortunately, Madam Scorpion called our bluff and not only came to join the party, but she brought Lord Bedlam. So, yay! He is creaming his pants, and uh, <laughs> things are going weird. Nothing like working with your bosses on a game. Fun. A dwarven woman approaches. <clears throat> what will you have, moody looking stranger? A nail. The darkest ale you've got. Oh, God. Like, really super dark. Okay, she's <sighs> a superhero. The waiter she's... leaves and soon returns with your ale. Oh, that might just be a yeah, fan fiction writer inside her. That's. Perfect. Not the I best. I sip my ale and brew. God damn it. <laughs> okay, roll to brew. Roll to brood? Really? Uh, oh, okay. I suppress his laugh as Kate actually rolls her dice. Very successful brood. You look incredibly <laughs> imposing as you drink your dark, questionable ale from the Oh table. no, everyone else is gonna want to try and outbrood her. Oh god. Thank you. Well, on, miss. And the next person to enter the tavern is Oh, Maybe we gotta choose, don't we? Oh no. Enter the tavern and sit exactly six feet away from the door. As close to the wall as I can. If there are no seats in that spot, I move one there. Yeah, you definitely play in the rogue. I then order a glass of their finest red wine. If it is not their finest wine, then I explain to the waitress that their blood will do instead. Red is red, after all. Jesus Christ. This is... This is a nightmare and party. Kate is edgelord, but you're, uh, edgier than that. This is a nightmare party, dude. Supervisor, mm -hmm. put in an order for some red wine, please. Very expensive. Well, luckily for the waitress, <laughs> she very nice red wine. Some of the best red wine you've ever tasted. Oh my god! I think Lord Bedlam has like a crush on Madame Scorpion. <laughs> Maybe. I doubt that. I'll mark it down as acceptable. Works for me. Anyway, last up is Dave. Jesus Christ. What do you do? I burst in playing some rocket tunes. I enter the tavern, strum my ukulele, hop up on a table, and start singing a song. Oh, God. I reach for my knife. <laughs> uh, the barkeep says that drinks are on the house if you quietly and calmly take a seat. Oh, great. I'll have a cherry cola, please, and a spare flask of it for the road. Ew, you want that in a flask where it's going to get all shaken up and flat? Gross. The tavern doesn't have cola. Oh. <clears throat> Bartender, may I please speak to your manager? Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I hate these people. All three of them suck. Kate is the only one who's even passable. <clears throat> I sigh, but let him have his call without further protest. I have a feeling I'm gonna have man. to. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm gonna have to let a lot of things slide tonight. All right, now that you're all gathered here, do any of you want to interact with each other a little before we move on? No, I'm brooding. No, I am also brooding. No, I am brooding. No, I'm brooding. To what end? Fuck me. To socialize and play the game. Stan, I had to work for this cola. I've got to enjoy it. I hate you so <laughs> god damn much. Bah! Lord Archibald Lightsbane doesn't go to other people. People go to him. <sighs> Let me guess. Kate. Well, I would, but that would be kind of out of character, wouldn't it? I, I think I just need to keep up this brood. They have all, oh my all god, picked lone wolf characters. Which, you know, well, can Dave's be a... just an idiot. I mean, you could pull, like, a Guardians of the Galaxy <clears throat> thing where they're, like, forced to work together. <clears throat> okay. I can see that this group is going to need some extra nudging, maybe even outright hand-holding. Should have expected that, I guess. Kate and Scorpion definitely haven't played before. Bedlam's too wrapped up in their own character to notice much else. And Dave is... Dave. All right. Well, some time passes and everything seems normal. That is, until you hear the marching of armored feet in the distance, but growing closer. Then, suddenly, the door bursts open. A dun, squad dun, dun. of armed men enter the tavern, <clears throat> wearing blue tabards emblazoned with a golden griffin. It's clear that they are guards or soldiers, which is weird, because Ilix has no guards or soldiers. Their leader, a stern man with a wide, flat face that looks like it's been pounded out with a meat tenderizer, <clears throat> steps forward and points towards Lord Archibald. Lord Archibald Lifespain, 
You have been found guilty of crimes against the kingdom of Stoltorum. In the king's name, come with us to the palace so that you may receive a punishment befitting of your family's station. Ooh, I get to be the star of the plot? Uh, you know, you know what? Maybe it can work. Maybe it can work. I mean, <clears throat> how dare you make such baseless accusations? I may have committed many, many crimes, but never against my own kingdom. How dare you sully the life stained family name with such slander? What a fucking argument. I've committed many crimes, but never against my own kingdom. The king will be the judge of that. Now come with us. Nonsense! Lord Archibald Lifespain surrenders to no man, or woman, or 63% of the world's known monsters. Wait, what? You've been looking what? through the beast here, haven't you? If you dare to seize me, then you shall have to contend with the might of the greatest wizard the Lifespain line has ever seen! Well, not yet. You're only level. Fucking called it! Oh, damn. <laughs> well, the third or fourth greatest wizard the Lifesbane family has ever seen. And the aid of any soul who cannot stand the sight of such imperialism in this free city. <clears throat> oh, I'll help you, Lord Ben. <laughs> uh, I mean, Lord Archibald. You know what? This this was how it was always going meant to, to be. Sing. I can have my knife. Guys with my ukulele and play the song of minor inconvenience. Mm, vicious mockery. <laughs> Dave rolls the dice for a song and I roll several for the okay. armament. Three of them now have the inconvenience affliction. So each turn they have to roll for the chance that something inconvenient happens. That actually sounds like a pretty cool low level spell, honestly. Yeah. The leader doesn't seem to like your song too much, though, so he orders one of his men to shut you up. So, the soldier walks up to you and... I roll another dice. ...punches you in the face for three points of damage. Oh, man. Reminds me of Wednesday. What did you do Wednesday? Well, it is Jay. a little different. The city is lawless, and that means the people That's who are the... fans of armored assholes showing up and laying down the law. Ah. So, by punching you in the face, the guard has created quite the commotion, which means it would be the perfect time for someone else to step in. I look to Kate and then to Madam Scorpion. Okay. So this scenario is a little obvious, but they're both new, so I figured it'd be good to start with something that gives them a lot of freedom to try stuff. But they both remain silent. <clears throat> Why? It would be much more advantageous to bide my time. You are the worst. Uh, she's Scorpion. just coming to keep brooding, isn't she? Yeah, just biding my time. I'm all about biding my time. <sighs> Plus, I'm way too busy staring to the abyssal depths of this ale and contemplating the oh horror my of my existence. Okay, you're trying <laughs> yeah. too hard, please. And Madam Scorpion. That, that is just... fan fiction. Oh my god. Just... Okay, well, as you sit there brooding, one of the soldiers shoves a patron into your table, spilling your ale. Oh no! <gasps> you scum! How could you do this? It was one of the few truly pure things left in this world, and you destroyed it, murdered it in cold blood. What? I unsheath my sword. No, no, don't rush into things, dear. All that bravado. Oh my unnecessary. fucking god! Just leave this to me. Hmm. Besides, I believe you've used too many actions for one turn. What did she do? So you don't want to do anything until someone wants to do anything, just so that you can show them up. You are the fucking worst. What? No, I haven't done any actions. I just started. And I, as I always do, shall finish it. Do you two know be. each other? What is this? Finish? Probably. But, meaning no offense, madam. I had a big plan and Steve, I mean, Scott, uh, oh, God. Game Master. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I didn't finish my turn earlier. Shouldn't I have the chance to go? I'm the star of this whole scenario, aren't I? It's going to make me choose, isn't it? Yeah! Lord yeah. Bill's the star! We're all just <clears throat> moons in his orbit! Please, dear God. Actually, wait a minute, yeah, Lord Bedlam's just short. Look at Kate. Huh. Madam Scorpion's taller than Kate, and Kate's taller than Lord Bedlam, so Lord Bedlam's just short. Because Dave is, like, queerly sized down in the background there. Yeah. Uh, well, I never said that, and technically that wasn't a turn per se, since combat hadn't re- Guys! I mean, ma'am, sir, with respect. 
I was kind of on a roll here. Yeah, you're gonna have to choose here. Fuck. Ah, crap. A pile up already. Now, technically, there are statistics and dice rolls that determine who goes when, but the first thing you learn when you run a game is that those are malleable. The reality here is the person running a game can always choose to bend the rules. Sometimes, when things are going off the rails or players are new, that stops the game from devolving into chaos. Like now. <clears throat> it's an easy encounter, so whoever goes next is likely going to dictate the plan and outcome of the battle. So, who should I let make the next move and set their plan into motion? I mean, Kate! <clears throat> right? She's the paladin! I mean, Kate. I, uh... Like, she was on a roll, but we did clearly they're here for Lord Bedlam. Or Lord Archibald. I don't want to let Madame Scorpion have it because no. she sucks. She's a bitch. She is just going to like, oh yeah, I have. Maximize my character for full damage. So yeah, she's I'm definitely I'm gonna do this and everyone fucking dies. Oh god. I I feel like Lord Bedlam or Kate. But I, I like Kate. She's nice and Lord. Oh, you know yeah, what? I'm just saying. Kate's right. Her turn wasn't finished. Not really sure if I'd call it a roll though. Oh, it was a roll. A dark, brooding role with excellent fashion sense. And, you know, the fact that she's, like, secretly a superhero, if she's not, I will genuinely be surprised. I'm pretty sure this yeah, will pay off in honestly. the end if I'm on her good side, so I don't get, like, fucking blasted. And mesmerizing. Uh, you'll moments. get blasted, but not, <clears throat> but not by severely. her. Alright, don't push it. Just tell us what you plan to do with that sword, Scarlet. As she turns her notes with that playful, teasing grin that I've already grown used to, I find myself forgetting that supervillains have hijacked our game and just enjoy the moment of levity. She has that effect. From the word go, we've had an easy rapport. I just feel relaxed around her. Even now, despite the circumstances, we can easily slide into casual banter. That's not gone unnoticed either, if the eyebrow I'm getting from Madame Scorpion is any indication. Hastily, I clear my throat and straighten my posture, but it does little to dull that razor-sharp glare. Okay. <clears throat> I raise my blade and imbue with the essence of fear. Pure black flames come to life across its steel surface. With my burning blade, I swing it in a mighty arc towards one of the soldiers. But my target isn't his head or his heart. It's his armor! So, you're using shatter armor? Yeah, I just didn't want to say it. It ruins the poetry of the moment to call out some technical-sounding attack name. Anime would disagree. Right. The thing is, Essence of Fear triggers on your next attack, and its impact depends on how much damage you do. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to start out with anything deadly. Did I use it wrong? You're definitely a superhero. Yeah. No, just unconventionally. I wouldn't have thought of it. Let me look it up. No need, Stanley. I can't understand why you'd avoid a more lethal attack, but it can work in theory. The fear effect is amplified based on a killing blow. Oh my god. So if you successfully shattered the I armor, was right, she does know about this. Way. However, if the armor isn't shattered, nothing happens. Oh. Well, that makes sense. How did you know that? I studied the entire D&D handbook. Why, it's just as our dear Kate said. You can learn anything yeah. you put in the research. She fucking... Oh my god. She, she read, read the whole the... thing. Oh my god. I shrug, but don't press further. Seems like something that would take a lot more work to remember than casually searching about spells and swords on the internet. No, she didn't. She She bought the fucking books, I guarantee you. But if so Scorpion doesn't want to explain, has them. yeah, doesn't want to explain beyond that. No one here can tell her otherwise. Certainly not me. Regardless of how Scorpion knows about it, Kate's move is clever and creative. It's one of those things that you might only see from someone new who doesn't know the right way to use their abilities. And miraculously, after the final dice comes to a stop, it works. The soldier's armor is ripped to shreds from your attack, and the flames around your sword engulf the area. Though they don't actually seem to burn much, by the time they disappear, the soldiers are in a state of panic including the one who is scrambling around in his underwear. Yes! All right, guys, they're all yours. <laughs> all that ceremony and not a drop of blood. Well, I suppose I ought to fix that. Let's begin the slaughter show. Uh, she's <sighs> edgy murder, murder hobo. How much you want to bet she's, she's just edge lord? How much you want to bet she's playing chaotic evil? Definitely. Oh, it turned into a slaughter, right? Not that I intended their first battle to be a struggle. I, w I wouldn't do that even for my normal crew. Some people like tormenting their parties, but that's not really my bag. We all get our asses kicked enough in the real world. In Spells and Swords, we get a chance to live in a world where we do the ass kicking for a change. It's a nice fantasy, even if that's all it is. Damn straight, man. 
By the time the imaginary dust settles, <clears throat> the soldiers have been thoroughly trounced by the party, and even a few more thoroughly tormented by Madame Scorpion, but honestly, was that really a surprise? No. Way to go, everyone! We really came together as a squad and got Dave. those tasks done in no time! Dave! Did you refer to those human beings we killed as tasks? Because I don't really care, obviously. I'm incredibly disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> well. Super violent, as you can see. Okay, you... <sighs> so bad at hiding it. I'll say that was some high quality violence if I've ever seen it. And I have. Spoiler alert, my backstory is very tragic. Of course it is. Of yeah, course it is. Yeah, makes sense. Yes, I concur. Well played, Scarjo. Oh my god. <laughs> Scarlet. Scarlet Ravenblood, the dark paladin of darkness. Trying too hard again, but okay. Mm. Of course. <laughs> Well done either way. That trick with the flames broke their spirits from the start. Okay, made all of them happy. Thanks. Pretty hardcore. And thanks for letting me try it, by the way. I know it was a little off the wall. Sure, no problem. I thought it was really creative. You're doing great for a beginner. You think so? I was a little nervous, but it's been fun so far. She offers a small, genuine smile, and the air in the room feels a little lighter. I smile back. She's right. Despite the weird circumstances, it's been fun. And you, blood-soaked stranger, you are also most impressive. What's your name, madam? Everyone turns towards Scorpion expectantly. Now that she's been asked directly, she can't avoid saying it. Assuming, of course, that she came up with one. It's Scorpion. Me? Why? I'm deaf. <sighs> yep. Okay. Shit, it's pretty dark. No, it's fucking not. That's like 13-year-old trying to be edgy. My name is Death because I kill people, and I soaked in their blood, and I drink their blood, and yeah. And then I sit in the table and brood, and I look at everybody, wondering who I should kill. It's, it's, fuck off. Get the fuck out of here with that edgy teen bullshit. And fitting, too. You acquitted yourself well, Lady Death. Well fought. All right, look at that. You won your first battle, you introduced yourselves. You're basically a full-fledged party now. Really? Just like that? Yeah. Just like that. Excellent! Then let us proceed with our quest. We must root out and destroy this threat to the life-paying family name, Post-Haste. <laughs> uh, whatever that threat is exactly. We should probably find that out. Yeah, you kind of killed the people before you could ask them. Good idea, hobos. sir. Luckily for you, you may have your answers soon. For as the dust settles, a wizened old man picks his way through the carnage, waving towards you. He calls out, Oh, thank goodness you're alive, Lord Lifespain. I was worried those ruffians would strike you down before I could find you. You see, I have something vitally important to- I stab him! I stab him. Oh my god! Lord. You what? I mean, <laughs> sure. Life's pointless anyway. But he was oh about to God. tell me vital information about- Stanley, roll the dice. You are awful. I glance toward Bedlam and shrug apologetically. It's a fair action. I can't really stop her. So with some hesitation, I roll for the old man. That is one very dead old guy. Damn. Your knife goes right through his heart, killing him instantly. Naturally. Next, I clean my blade and search his <clears throat> pockets for any kind of note or parchment. I hate you. I frown and glance down at my notes. Can she read them? Or is this just the sort of... Or is this sort of thing just predictable for a supervillain? After taking a second to confirm the old man's inventory, I turn back to Scorpion. You find a letter addressed to the man from Lord Archibald's long-lost younger brother. He has allied with the Kingdom of Stoltorum to steal the Lifespain family throne, and sent this man here to lead you astray, in case the attempt on your life failed. Oh. By the demon god Carnanthium! What a shocking twist! Betrayed by my own flesh and blood! You, uh... Hmm... <laughs> Okay, this was a redo of a previous thing. She read through it and she... Oh my god, that's why she knows. She has done this before, or she's studied very in-depth. Lord Bedlam continues his monologue, but I find it hard to pay attention. Instead, I'm staring back at my notes. No, she couldn't have read them. There was no opportunity for her to. Maybe she's just that good? She figured out the battle system in no time, after all. I feel someone staring and look up to find Kate frowning my direction. She's thinking the same thing I am, isn't she? 
I shrug and chance look at Scorpion before moving on. Maybe one day I'll find something worth risking a wrath for, but this isn't it. Eventually... Oh, well. Eventually, Lord Bedlam runs out of steam and the party moves on. As time passes, they grow more comfortable with the, ga with the game and each other. Even when I give them a challenge, they tear through it. Alright, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, f Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Adios.